All right, here we go. This is going to be a quick little primer on how you can write UIs using the Maya.cmds module. I'm going to do everything inside of the script editor so we can be nice and quick. So I can run this code here and this is what we're going to try to work towards by the end of this little mini series is we're going to be able to write a UI like this where I can store certain objects in all these different fields here in these different text fields. And whenever I want, I can just recall my selections by clicking on these buttons and you know you can already see how this can be a little bit helpful for when you're doing things like modeling if you don't want to dig through your outliner if you have a lot of objects you know you can select a particular object and zoom in on it or if you're doing animation you can store controls in there and you can select the stored control and start to animate it like so So the easiest way to start writing UIs is to actually just steal some code out of the documentation. So I can type cmds.window, highlight this little window function, and then do help on selected command. So what this actually does is brings me directly to the window function documentation. And if you come all the way to the bottom, you can see some examples here. Okay, so we have, um, a few different examples. So we have this first one here and it looks like there's a few different examples down here. What I actually care about is just this first little section here. So I can just copy this to make a new window. I can see that they put a little nice little comment there that says what it actually does. So I'm going to use this as some template code so I don't have to retype everything and just paste this into my script editor. And if I run this without actually changing any of the code, you can kind of see what's happening. So we're getting a UI and the title is long name. We have two buttons. This one says do nothing. When I click on it, nothing happens. And when I cl click on close, it closes. So and it's actually executing some sort of command when I click on the button. And usually that's what you want to do when you have a button so that when a user clicks on the button, it does something. And I'm just going to go quickly over what all this stuff means delete that comment. We don't really need it. And I'm just going to start to space this code out a little bit, just so things make a little bit more sense. Okay. So now I've spaced this code out and I kind of want to explain all the different parts. So we're importing Maya.cmds. That makes a lot of sense. Now we're creating a window using this cmds.window function. And then we're creating a layout for our window. And inside of the layout, we have two buttons. We have this button and we have this button. And then we have this set parent command. And I'll explain what that does in a bit. And very importantly, at the last line, we're showing the window. Now, if you don't show the window, you're going to have, um, you still have created this window in memory, but you won't actually be able to see it. So if I run this code, you can see, I don't get anything. I don't see my window, but now when I show this window, you can see now I can actually see my window. So, uh, it's often, you know, smart to show the window after you've created it. So you just need to make sure you have this show window function at the very end. And let's go over what each one of these different functions do and all the different flags associated with them. So we have this CMDS the window and it just creates a little window in memory and we're storing it in this variable. And, um, first thing we're doing is we're kind of setting the title of the window. So it's called long name at the moment. If I change this to awesome and I run it, you can see it's creating this awesome window. It's changing the name of that top title bar there. That's all that is. And then we have this icon name section. And this isn't really that important. If you have an icon for the window and uh, you mouse over it, I guess it just shows you the icon name. I think it's a little bit redundant for this example, so you can actually remove it. I don't think I've ever used that icon name flag, but if you need it, it's there. And lastly, we have the width and the height of the window. So this is a default value. It won't actually stop you from resizing the window and, um, you know, you can actually do that by using this other flag called sizable and I can say is equal to false. So it's not actually resizable. Now when I try to mouse over the corners, 
can't actually resize it at all. So that's, you know, just a way to stop it from being resizable entirely. But this width and height is just the default value for when you run the, uh, when you run the script. So I can set this to 200. And now when I run it, I get a nice little square like so. And of course you can change it to any value you want. So 500 like that, you know, that's a little bit big, um, but you can change this based on your needs. Now, the next important thing to understand is how all these widgets and column layouts and different layouts actually work within the window. So the way that CMDS deals with this UI is that anything underneath the window, so this column layout is right underneath the window. You can see it's the first thing underneath that um, this window function. This automatically gets parented underneath the window. And likewise, I create this button here. This button automatically gets parented underneath this column layout. And now I have another button here. Now this button doesn't get parented to that button because buttons can't actually contain any widgets. So whatever you put, you know, next is just going to be parented directly to the first thing that can accept widgets, which is this column layout there. And I can have multiple layouts. So I can actually create another layout there. So when uh, I create this layout, this layout is parented underneath that layout. This button is parented underneath this layout. And this button is parented underneath this layout. So that's just how uh, layouts kind of work. And you know, when you're typing out code, you just have to be aware of where you're placing certain things because, you know, depending on where your code execution is, it'll get parented to a certain portion of the UI. And if you don't know, um, you know, kind of how things are parented, it's going to be really confusing to lay out your UI. So what the actual layouts here do, this column layout, this actually defines how the widgets get laid out in the UI. So if I run this, you can see our, our current buttons are being laid out in this column here. So it's going from here downwards like so. And if I add another button, just as an example, just add a button there and I run this code, you can see it's added it underneath like that. And I might change the name of these buttons just so it's a little bit clearer to see what's what. And I'm going to remove this command entirely, just delete the entire command flag. So now I have three buttons labeled ABC and you can see ABC like that. Now, if I wanted to change from a column layout to something else like a row layout, I can change that. But bear in mind that different layouts have different flags. So this flag is not actually valid for this particular layout. So if I run this, you can see not only am I getting an error it's saying too many children in the layout, um, it's also not doing what it's supposed to with this adjustable column. So the easiest way to see what flags are available and how to fix this type of errors is to actually just check out the documentation itself. So I'm going to come help on selected um, command. And I can see that, you know, the adjustable column here takes an integer. So if I click on this, it says specify which column has an adjustable size that changes with the sizing of the layout. So it takes an integer. So I just want to put one here to start off with. And that's not going to fix our error. So if I run this, we're still getting an error saying there's too many children in the layout. And it's an important thing to understand with row layouts in particular is they work based on columns. So we're creating a row of widgets and each row, like each in, in the row itself, each widget needs to sit on a column. It's a little bit confusing, but if I just type number of columns, uh, you'll start to see what I mean. So I'm going to say three. So now if I run this, you can see I have these laid out in a row now, but um, each row has it's like the row itself has um, different columns. So this is column one, column two and column three. Now I can say um, if I say two number of columns is two, it's going to error out. So let's close this and run this. Now, why is it erroring out? It's because we have three widgets. We have actually three buttons, but we're only giving this row layout a number of columns as two. So there's not enough columns to fit these buttons within. 
But if I change this to three or any number greater than three will be okay. So I can even have an, a higher number like four, it'll still be fine. But it's important to have enough columns for the amount of um, objects that you need, you know, inside of this particular row layout. And what this adjustable column here does is it says which one of these widgets, which one of the columns is the one that is scalable. So I can say two. Now if I run this, you can see the middle one is being scaled whilst the ones at the front and the back aren't. And if I change this to three and run this, you can start to see the difference. Now the last one, the third column is the one that's scaling and not the second column. So that's just what the adjustable column there does. Now you, I recommend just checking out all the different flags for you know all the different layouts in order to see what you actually need. You know sometimes you're trying to go after a particular look for a you know for a UI, and you just need to check out all the different flags to make sure you know that has that capability in order to do what you want. And uh, lastly. You know, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to have multiple different layouts, you can do that too. So what I want to do is I can copy this and paste this back up here. So I want a master layout. So I can type column layout and let's just change the adjustable column back to true. And uh, let's do something like this, space it out a little bit. So it's a little bit clearer to see what's happening. So all three buttons belong to this row layout and this row layout belongs to this adjustable column. But now if I don't want, you know, if I, if I want to create another button and I don't want this to be part of this row, if I just add it there like that and I run this, you can see it's just appending it to the end. So now we just have, it's still a single row, but I don't want this button there. I want this button underneath all these uh, these three buttons here. How do I do that? Well, that's where this set parent command comes in handy. So what the set parent command does is if I take this and I put it underneath it and you can see it's doing set parent dot dot. What that actually means is setting the parent to one level above the current level. So the current level is the row layout. You can see everything underneath here is under the row layout. Once I do set parent dot dot, it sets the parent so that it's one level above this row layout, which is this column layout. So now this button isn't underneath the row layout anymore. It's actually underneath the column layout. So when I run this code, you can see, okay, now I have my row at the top, my three buttons, and then I have a new button at the bottom. And that's because this button this label D button isn't underneath this row layout. It's underneath a new, like it's underneath the column layout, which is above the row layout. Okay, so that's just a nice way to kind of organize your widgets. It's it's a handy thing to know. And it, it really is just the basis for how you start to construct these, these UIs and how to organize your widgets the way you want and have it laid out the way you want. So, I'm going to get into a little bit more detail next time of, you know, how you can start to think about layouts and how you can adjust layouts and stuff like that. And also how to execute functions when you run this, uh, when you click on the button, when you run this, how to give each button a unique function. But just to show you guys quickly, uh, what you actually use is the, uh, the command flag. So I can say command is equal to cms.polycube. And if I just copy this and paste it here, paste it here, and maybe each button does something else. So that one creates a sphere and this one creates a torus and label D maybe just does nothing. So run this. Now you can see if I click on A, I'm getting a cube. If I click on B, I'm getting a sphere. And if I click on C, I'm getting a torus. And that's just how you associate different commands to different buttons, but I'll get into the command flag uh, a little bit more in the next lesson as well, because the command flag is really uh, quite confusing if you don't understand what's actually happening. And, you know, I'll explain why I'm using a string here 
and I'll explain a better way of doing this instead of using a string. So like in the uh, example I showed at the beginning of the lesson, um, I'm actually using a button wrapper function to wrap the actual code that I want to do. So it can get a little bit complicated and I can explain why you want to do um, something like that. But yeah, I think that's it for this lesson. Just a really quick primer on how you can start to write UIs. One last thing I should mention is always wrap your UIs, please. So you want to create a function that says uh, whatever you want to call the function. I'm going to call this my first UI. And I want to put all this code underneath that and then at the very end, just execute that function rather than having all this stuff on the top level. And uh, that's just a nice way to prevent any kind of errors or unintended consequences of having all this code on the top level, especially if you're going to be creating variables and such. I won't get into any more details on that, but um, it's just a really good convention to adhere to to make sure that you don't have these variables on the top level unless you really intend to. So yeah, make sure you stick around. Oh, 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 oh,